Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is another episode of my series called Make It a Chord Melody. And in this lesson, we are going to be talking about how to improvise chord melodies in a jazz context. So we're improvising jazz chord melodies, which means that we are playing melodies, but we're supporting every instance of the melody with a chord shape, which takes a lot of technique and vocabulary and fretboard knowledge and all of that, but it's so worth it so we can hear ourselves playing a melody and what the harmony sounds like it underneath at the same time. It's a really fun thing to do. Check out the other two lessons in this series or this whole series. There's a link to the playlist of the series in the description. We arranged a couple tunes in the last couple lessons, and in this one we're going to fill out our knowledge by being able to improvise and play scales with uh, harmony over a 2-5-1 in a jazz context. We'll do a multi-step, very organized uh, procedure here to do this. So grab your guitar and follow along. Let's dive in. The first chord we're going to work with is minor seven. Then we're going to do dominant seven, then major seven. Then we're going to put them together. So we'll work on how to improvise with each of those individually and then together in a progression. A quick note here, when I first mapped this out, it was all going to be one lesson, but it was so huge and so dense that I ended up breaking it up into multiple lessons. So this outline you see right above me here is actually individual videos instead of portions of this one lesson. So this lesson is just covering the minor seven chord, and that's a lot of information. It's really fun, really cool stuff on its own. And then I'll cover the other parts of this outline above me later in this series, and those are gonna be great lessons as well. Moving on, Jared, take it away. Let's go into minor seven and through this series of steps that we're gonna do on each chord. Step number one is that we're going to map out the chord tones of C minor seven on the top string. With all of these, we're gonna be improvising with melodies just on the top string, and we're gonna be supporting those melodies with chords using the top four strings of the guitar. So let's find these. This is the five of C minor seven. This is the flat seven of C minor seven. This is the root. This is the flat three. Here's the five again. Okay, so I want you to just cycle through those till you feel like you see it clearly. That's step one. We wanna see those chord tones. Let's do step two. Step two is to drill the chord inversions of any chord type along the top string here. So we're gonna take those chord tones and then figure out what the chord shape is that supports that chord tone as a melody and they will be inversions of the chord. So I'll give them to you here with shapes on the screen. This is C minor seven first inversion where the five is the melody. Okay, here's C minor seven. Second inversion where the flat seven is on the top as the melody. Here's C minor seven. Third inversion where the root is the melody note and here is C minor seven where the flat three is the melody note, and then it gets back to where the five, same shape as before, where the five is on top. That is the next step, and then you want to just drill them nice and slowly. Make sure you can see them. Don't worry about playing these perfectly yet, because the next step we are going to alter them, so let's move on to that step. The next step is to alter the chords to make them easier to play and or better sounding to you. Often that's both is happening. And just there's just one of these four chords that I'm gonna alter and I'll show you. This one I like like this, this C minor seven with the five on top. This one kind of has to be this way. Um, this shape can work, but I tend, this one's the hardest to play, but I keep it like that. And root on top, same one. So this one's the one we're changing. Okay, this is root, fifth, flat seven, and flat three. And I'm taking the five away and replacing it with four. If you watch the other videos in this series, which you should if you're interested in chord melody in jazz, then you'll see that I talk about this exact shape uh, often and it can be used for many things, but so far we're using it as a minor seven chord where the third, the flat three, is the melody note. So this is minor 11, and that's what I like to use. I'll play it like this sometimes. That's what I like to use as the uh, chord shape that har harmonizes and supports flat three of the chord. So now the next step is to really drill those and feel like you can get to them swiftly-ish. Okay, moving up and down the neck like that. Step number five is to play the rest of the scale 
while being supported by those same chord shapes. So we're looking for scale degrees, scale notes around the melody notes that we can hold the same chord shape with. And I'll just give these to you here, of course, and then you can practice them. And there's a very, very important rule, according to at least the system that I use for this, which is that you do not want to get rid of a guide tone ever. The guide tones are usually the third of the chord, a seven of the chord, or instead of seven, if a, a six can be there instead of seven. Uh, and sometimes the third can be replaced by four, but often three and seven or three and six are the notes that we want to make sure are always in each chord shape to give it the correct color and um, t the texture harmonically that we want for every chord. So if it, there's a five and if there's a root, in the shape, you can replace those all you want. So remember we did this shape and just for the sound of it and the ease of playing it, we replaced the five with four. Well, we can, we can replace the five. We're allowed to do that, but we wouldn't be allowed to replace the flat seven or replace the three because we need those for the quality of the chord. So let's play these scales. This is C minor seven with five on top. We can lift off the five to play four on top. So now we have four of the scale. Ooh, sounds so nice pulling on the neck a little in the telly way. Love that. Okay, so four, five. Okay, this shape here has flat seven. Okay, this is six. Remember I said flat seven or six. So six and seven can function um, as those guide tones. So we have six, flat seven. Okay, let's go up to the root. Great, the root can be replaced by two. Here's flat three. Okay, next is four, which we got to. Ah, oh, what do we have? We have the whole scale. This is the Dorian scale. If you don't know about modes at all and you want an introduction, check out my modes video that uh, talks about them and how to study them. So we have four of the mode, of the Dorian mode, five, six, flat seven, root, two, flat three, four, Let's go back down. This one is the hardest to switch to, just kind of giving you a heads up on that again. Okay. Little, we're merging into the next step here that I'll tell you in a sec. Just want to give you a heads up here about something you'll be inclined to do and feel free to do whatever you want in the end, but I'll tell you why I don't do this. This four here of the scale, like this is one, two, flat, three, four, five, four. Uh, this shape here that we've devised the minor 11, uh, is so, so tempting and easy to grab the pinky and play that up there. I don't do that because that takes away the flat three of this chord and it doubles that note here and I just don't, like the sound of it. I mean, in a vacuum right now, it sounds perfectly fine, right? But as far as the harmonic um, nature and gravity, uh, functional harmony of a progression that I'm working with, I don't like the flat three going away, and I don't like that bold, doubled sound. This sounds like a cool kind of modern sound, but it doesn't work with at least the language that I'm trying to use with harmonizing melodies as chord melodies. So that's why I like this, because it has the guide tones in there. It has four, five, four, flat, three, two. Again, do whatever you want. These are not rules that actually matter as rules. These are guidelines um, that I follow to try to, as much as possible, make this be a system and a language. Naturally, the next step is to just drill those so you really have them down. So up and down, drill them. Step after that would be to improvise with them a little bit. it comes out for you. Don't worry about sounding great with it right away. If you drill them up and down and then start to break them up into phrasing, then you're making music, you are improvising melodies. Uh, phrasing is very important. If you're not familiar with phrasing, check out my phrasing video 
uh, it's very helpful if you want to work on that for composing or improvising melodies of any kind. We're going to piece these different chord types together to play over a progression, but even just with one chord type, you can start to use it in real music. A famous example of a tune that stays on a minor type harmony, a Dorian harmony for a long time, is So What by Miles Davis. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, we just have D minor 11 forever. It does change after that, but I have it cut off just to not block the guitar. And we're just going to play over just that chord um, just to show. Now we're on D minor, so if you, you can do this in any key, I'm just moving up all those shapes that we did and now applying it relative to D minor. And you can just try to play along with something over a D minor chord. That's my favorite right there, just the three, the flat three, two, one of the chord. You get the idea takes a while to get used to, but already practical. And even in a tune where there's more going on, if you have a couple measures of a minor chord, you can use a little bit of this uh, vocabulary and then go back to whatever else you were playing, even if you don't have other chord melody arrangements worked out for scales to improvise with. So I know it's a huge undertaking, but just little by little, piece by piece, you know, enjoy the process. And the big win here is that every shape that you're using to harmonize a certain chord tone type, chord tone, chord quality, um, and, and melody, that context is the same thing anywhere, any key forever. Right, so every time that minor third is harmonized on a minor chord, it's gonna, on the top string in particular, it's that shape. If a five is harmonized on any minor seven chord where you're playing the top string as the melody note and it's five, it's that shape, always, right? And the, and the four, that shape, always, right? So you, so we get closer, one step closer, every time we kind of internalize one of those, it was like, ah, every single time, any melody, any tune, if, if I know the chord type and um, just the shape that goes with it, then we're unlocking this language of chord melody. If you want some chord melody arrangements to study closely, there's tabs and notation. Get my solo guitar arrangement pack. There's solo guitar arrangements, but also specifically some chord melody arrangements and some stuff in between. So you can check it out in detail where I use these exact voicings on several tunes like Fly Me to the Moon and Black Orpheus. And you can see, oh yeah, that that's the arrangement and the language unfolding. And you can see it on paper. If you want to get that, there's a link in the description to grab it totally for free. Or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to download it there. If you want something to watch next, I recommend watching my video about my chord melody arrangement of Fly Me to the Moon. I'll put a link to it on the screen here that you can click on or you can go to the link in the description. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week I'm continuing with this series, Make It a Chord Melody, except it's going to be very cool because we are going to arrange a song that is not a jazz tune because we don't have to only play jazz when we're doing chord melody. It's just a very common place that it is used, but we can use this same technique with a slight twist on harmonies that are not seventh chords and on songs that are just popular songs or folk songs or anything. So we're going to do that next week and it's going to be really valuable and really cool. So I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.